Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So this video is all about uh, gastritis and gastroesophageal reflux disease. So I will explain you the pathogenesis of gastritis and gastroesophageal reflux disease initially. And then I will take you into you know, uh, symptoms and signs of gastritis and what all the treatment for gastritis including natural remedies. Uh, uh, and then I will explain you how to you know, uh, prevent gastritis and also what are the reasons why treatment for gastritis fails most of the time and what we should do. So let us jump into that. So what is actually gastritis? In order to understand this particular thing, so we really need to know a little bit about anatomy of the gastric mucosa. So here is the gastric mucosa that is shown here, which is basically the internal lining in our stomach. So this part here is our stomach here. So the internal lining of that stomach is actually enlarged here. And as you can see, there are a lot of cells present in the mucosal lining here. And part of that, especially the basal side or lower side of that is enlarged here. You can see there are a lot of cells here. So we have parietal cells, we have chief cells, we have enteroendocrine cells and also so there will be mucus cells on top lining. So this top lining will be mucus cells which are also called as foveolar cells. Let us get into what all these cells will do. Now the parietal cells they will secrete hydrochloric acid and that is the one which is helping in the digestion process. So that hydrochloric acid comes on top here and it is going to help in the digestion process. Note that hydrochloric acid, it is an acidic uh, content. So that has to be, you know, that acidic content uh, from that gastric mucosa has to be protected. Remember that. Chief cells, they will syn synthesize pepsin. Pepsin is a, a protein digestive enzyme that will be coming from chief cells. Enteroendocrine cells will synthesize some of the endocrine uh, hormones. And also most importantly, look at this top lining here. See, these are all uh, foveolar cells or the mucus cells and it will secrete uh, mucus, mucus secretion which is kind of alkaline in nature which has bicarbonate and that is the one which will keep the surface of the cell protected from the acid that is uh, coming out of the parietal cells. So that means our uh, mucosal, I means uh, the gastric lining here, it is well protected by the mucus cells. So imagine what will happen if this entire mucus cells is eroded or some part of the mucus cell if you take this out. So the gastric acid, the hydrochloric acid that comes out of the parietal cells so it will be directly in contact with this area here and that is how it starts to burn like heartburn and all that. So the pain that happens it is all because of that. So why that gastric mucosa will be eroded, why that gastric mucosa is taken out and how to recover that, how to, what to do so that this gastric mucosa will come back to the normal state. So that is what we really need to understand here and we need to you know work on that so that we will protect, we, we will maintain this normal gastric mucosa where the mucus cells will uh, keep secreting that uh, mucus which has got alkaline uh, mucus which will protect the epithelium against uh, shear stress and acid. Okay. So, gastritis uh, normally it, uh, it, it occurs, gastritis occurs when the stomach lining becomes inflamed and decreased mucus cell layer, thereby decreasing protective alkaline mucus and exposing the outer layer of the stomach to acid. Now, what causes uh, gastritis? So, in simple terms, regions can be put together as hurry, worry and curry. Remember this. Long term use of certain medications such as aspirin, ibuprofen, Excessive alcohol consumption, use of tobacco, cigarette smoking, presence of H. pylori uh, bacteria, certain illnesses also can cause uh, like gastritis, like diabetes, kidney failure, bile flow into the stomach, bile reflux that can cause uh, chronic gastritis, unhealthy and uh, irregular eating habits, remember that, that can also cause gastritis, chronic gastritis, poor digestion. Digestion is an important thing, so we really need to digest whatever the food that we take. So that, so if the digestion is not proper, so that can cause gastritis. Overeating is another thing that can lead to chronic gastritis because when the, when you overeat, like when you eat too much of food, where the gastric uh, or the stomach is expanded, or no, so so that. Uh, so the digestion is delayed. So that can also lead to gastritis. Eating badly combined food like we are, what we call as opposite food. I will make a video on what actually means the opposite food. So bad combination of food can lead to gastritis. Skipping meals, 
uh, can lead to gastritis over a long period of time. Eating too late at night can lead to gastritis. Uh, sleeping immediately after meals can lead to gastritis. Weak natural resistance and immunity. Uh, intake of improperly co uh, cooked food. Excess intake of tea, coffee and alcohol can lead to gastritis. Over consumption of citrus fruits like pineapple, grape, uh, lime, lemon, oranges. All these citrus fruits can actually lead to gastritis in a susceptible person. Worry, anxiety and tension can lead to gastritis because it will release a uh, hormone called cortisol and cortisol actually can lead to stress ulcers. Uh, use, of certain, uh, use of certain drugs, acids, substances like corrosive substances. Disruption of body's natural biological rhythm can lead to gastritis. Spicy food and fast food habit like all the time eating uh, too much spicy food and uh, fast food uh, with, uh, which, are, which are usually made of refined uh, flour can lead to gastritis. Excess use of green and red pepper, spicy uh, spices like garam masala, garlic, onion in diet, excess consumption of garlic and onion can also contribute to gastritis formation. Salty and sour foods, eating stale and fermented foods like dosas, bread or any bakery items can actually lead to, uh, can contribute to gastritis. It's one of the, you know, factor there. Excess intake of fast food, excess intake of oily food, uh, uh, hot and spicy pickles, uh, intake of carbonated beverages which often contain caffeine can lead to gastritis, insufficient sleep at night, suppression of natural uh, urges, lack of rest, stressful life, excessive anxiety, worry, jealousy, anger, fear, job dis dissatisfaction, all of these can be a precipitating factor because these are the things that will release excess hydrochloric acid and if it happens continuously, so where the mucosal layer, that's the mucus layer can slowly erode and that can lead to chronic gastritis. What are the symptoms of gastritis? So heartburn, chest pain like you usually refer as like uh, retrosternal retro uh, burning pain uh, and patient might uh, feel like sour or uh, bitter belching or the you know regurgitation that we can call it as. Patient might have nausea and uh, throat pain, coated tongue, regurgitation of food or sour substances coming into the mouth. If you uh, experience that, it's a science, signs and symptoms of gastritis. Vomiting, gaseous distension of the abdomen, heaviness in the abdomen, indigestion, aversion towards food, pain abdomen, chest pain, headache, loss of appetite, bad breath and bad taste in the mouth can also be a, can could be a sign of uh, gastritis actually. Increased flow of saliva in mouth, gum recession, increased flow of saliva uh, in the mouth along with the gum recession, feeling of uneasiness, hiccups and uh, burping, uh, frequent burping can be uh, maybe a sign of uh, gastritis. Change in weight in certain conditions uh, like unusual uh, weight loss or unintentional weight loss can be a sign of chronic gastritis. Changes in consistency of this, uh, consistency of stools can be a sign of uh, gastritis. Uh, severe burning sensation over feet, hands uh, can be a sign of uh, gastritis and mouth ulcers may be a sign of gastritis. See, there are some of the signs and symptoms of uh, gastritis that you must be aware of. Uh, what are the treatment for gastritis? So first and foremost thing is uh, we need to identify the cause. Once the cause is identified, step can be steps can be taken to avoid exposure. For example, if alcohol is triggering the inflammation, you can abstain or reduce amount of alcohol you drink. Anti-inflammatory drugs take, uh, taken to help manage other conditions like pain and other things need to be stopped or replaced. Uh, because uh, painkillers are most of, of, often they can be cause of uh, gastritis. So, what are the medications uh, that we uh, we need to take? So, the medications uh, are uh, like you no know, tablets are available to reduce uh, acid content uh, in the gastric uh, juice. You may need to take these medications for weeks or months depending on your situation. Medications used to treat gastritis include uh, we have antibiotic uh, medications to kill H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori, 
for like helicobacter pylori in your uh, digestive tract your uh, doctor may recommend a combination of antibiotics like clarithromycin and amoxicillin uh, along with that metronidazole uh, these are the things that will be combined in h pylori uh, treatment triple antibiotic we call it as uh, be sure to take the full antibiotic prescriptions usually for it will go from 7 to 14 days now medications that block acid production and promote healing process so this will include proton pump inhibitors like proton pump inhibitors they reduce acid by blocking the action of the stomach uh, parts of the stomach cells to produce acid that is the parietal cells that i have explained you uh, so proton pump inhibitors they inhibit uh, the proton pump in the parietal cells thereby decrease hydrochloric acid these drugs include uh, like you no know, prescription or over the counter medications like we have uh, omeprazole lansoprazole rabeprazole esmoprazole and these are some of the examples that i am saying here long term use of proton pump inhibitors uh, particularly at high doses uh, you got to be careful because it can increase uh, risk of hip wrist or spine fractures uh, so now the medications to reduce acid productions like no other uh, class of drugs that we have here uh, is H2 blocker, acid blockers also called as histamine 2 blockers. They reduce amount of acid released into digestive tract which relieves uh, gastric, uh, gastritis pain and encourages uh, healing process. Uh, so the available by prescription or over the counter these drugs can be available over the counter or also doctor can prescribe this. So, acid blockers include uh, we have femetidine, cimetidine, uh, nizatidine, ranitidine, these are some of the examples there. Now, we have antacids that neutralize stomach acid. So, doctor may prescribe this like antacid uh, in your drug regimen along with the proton pump inhibitors or H2 blockers or uh, helicobacter pylori uh, no, treatment. So, antacids what they do is they neutralize existing stomach acid and can provide rapid pain relief. Uh, side effects can include uh, constipation or diarrhea depending on the main ingredient in that particular antacid. Now, overall uh, symptoms and signs of chronic gastritis can sometimes go away in few hours if medication or alcohol is uh, which is causing gastritis uh, is taken out uh, especially if the alcohol is not take, uh, is taken out. Uh, but typically chronic gastritis, so that is about acute gastritis, chronic gastritis takes longer time to disappear and without treatment, treatment it may persist for persist for years. Now, uh, what are the uh, no, dietary modifications that we really need to know, uh, do here? So, as the saying goes prevention is better than cure, so it is better to avoid all the causative factors of acid peptic disorders. So, you should consider changes to your diet uh, to reduce stomach irritation. Things to avoid include uh, avoid excessive uh, salty, oily, sour and spicy foods. Avoid fried foods. Uh, avoid uh, acidic fruits like citrus, family fruits like lime, lemon, orange. Include alkaline rich uh, foods like green and green leafy vegetables, bottle gourd, bitter gourd, ridge gourd, ash gourd. Foods high in probiotics can be included uh, as a part of our diet such as yogurt, kefir, uh, lean but bland meats can be included. So like such as chicken, turkey, fish, plant based uh, proteins like beans and tofu, uh, whole grain, pasta, uh, pasta and whole wheat bread can be included uh, in our diet, especially uh, whole bread uh, or whole wheat bread or whole grain uh, if, the, if the person is uh, uh, not sensitive to gluten, remember that. Uh, some of the herbs that you, uh, that you can include for treating gastritis is Amla, Indian gooseberry is one of the best herb for gastritis and uh, various other uh, diseases. Uh, ginger, ginger has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties which makes it one of the best Ayurvedic uh, uh, herbs for gastritis. Fennel seeds like we call it as Samf, right. So, it helps in India, uh, sorry, uh, fennel seeds is one of the most popular gastritis uh, herbal uh, remedies because of its alkaline nature. And then we have carom seeds like aswine, it helps in indigestion, heartburn, nausea and feeling of uncomfortable uh, fullness uh, that is associated with gastritis. And also aloe vera, aloe vera also it helps in uh, reducing inflammation and relieving gastritis that can also be included uh, in the treatment. 
Now, uh, what, what are the lifestyle modifications that we really need to do to, uh, to avoid to treat gastritis and also to uh, prevent gastritis? So, uh, several lifestyle modification can help you manage the symptoms of gastritis. Eating, uh, diet and nutrition do play a great role in causing or preventing gastritis. Uh, so, but as you are healing and taking medication to reduce stomach acid, you may want to avoid foods that can increase stomach acid production. So, these are, uh, there are several foods and beverages that can trigger your heartburn and increase acid production. Like excessive salty, oily, sour, spicy, fried foods, acidic fruits like citrus family, lime, lemon and orange. You may want to avoid these and consume foods that can decrease heartburn and acid production such as alkaline rich foods like green and green leafy uh, vegetables. Consume foods high in probiotics such as yogurt and kefir, lean but bland meats such as chicken, turkey, fish, plant based proteins like beans, tofu, whole grain, uh, pasta, rice and bread. Uh, avoid alcohol, alcohol increases production of stomach acid, don't smoke, smoking stimulates production of stomach acid. Try to avoid tea, coffee uh, because consumption of tea and coffee increases acid production like all, uh, like alcohol and smoking. Avoid fried and junk food items. Do not remain hungry for long time. Use an antacid. Antacid decreases or neutralize gastric acid in the stomach. Uh, they will usually eliminate symptoms and uh, promote healing process. Eat smaller, uh, more frequent meals. If you experience frequent indigestion, eat smaller meats more often to help ease the uh, no effects of stomach acid. Do not overeat. If you overeat, it causes your stomach from getting too full and reduce gastric pressure. Thoroughly chew food. Uh, a minimum recommended number of chewing is 20 to 30 times before you swallow. So, you, need, you got to chew uh, 20 to 30 times uh, uh, every time the before you swallow. Thereby, you know, saliva, uh, it will mix with the food and the proper grinding is going on there. And the saliva has got this digestive enzyme called uh, salivary alpha amylase and this salivary alpha amylase, it is helping in the digestion of carbohydrates. So, and also uh, achieving a sufficient number of time, it grind the food well and uh, less, uh, less work will be there for stomach for digestion process. Avoid untimely and irregular food. Eat light dinner, do not sleep immediately after dinner. Uh, you should have time gap of 2 to 3 hours uh, between dinner and sleeping. The recommended sleeping position is supine uh, with the head raised using pillow and left lateral position is the other uh, best position that you can sleep. Uh, this is because it will avoid regurgitation of acid into esophagus due to anatomical position of the stomach and also the gravity which helps in this process. So, these are some of the signs and symptoms of gastritis and uh, remedies for gastritis including uh, modern medicine and also uh, dietary modifications and lifestyle modifications that we, you know, we all need to do. Why treatment fails? Let us get into that. Failure to identify the causative factor is one of the thing why treatment fails and not adhering to the treatment guidelines like initially we adhere to the treatment guidelines and over a period of time. So, kind of with the treatment guidelines will be waned off by a, a person who is having gastritis. So, that should not be done. Adhering to the dietary, uh, not adhering to the dietary advice, this is another uh, reason why treatment fails. Not adhering to the advice on lifestyle changes is other reason why treatment could fail. Uh, not being consistent can also fail the treatment. Lack of dietary discipline, lack of di uh, lifestyle discipline and uh, above all lack of willingness and determination to get the healing process uh, running and complete. So, this is why uh, what I think uh, will lead to failure in the treatment. So, what we should do? So, well, willingness and determination to heal yourself is the most important and that is where it starts. Adherence to the treatment guidelines for a long period of time, maintaining dietary discipline, discipline for a long period of time, being consistent with the lifestyle changes and being consistent with all of the above here over a long period of time. That is the key to the treatment for gastritis. So, most importantly, dietary discipline and lifestyle discipline is two, two important key uh, no points here that you should take away. 
uh, to heal yourself from gastritis just in case if you are having gastritis so these are some of the important things so now you know why the treatment could fail and what you should do so self discipline is the foundation of successful happy and healthy life so that's all about uh, gastritis i will see you in my next video with another health video uh, till then you take care bye bye